the idea with the choir is only to be able to sing any kind of music. Mm. And that idea I really got from Norma Lubov choir from the beginning. When was the beginning? Um, I bought my first record in 1959, I think. Mm. And then I wrote to Norma Lubov and we had a lot of conversation through letters and I received a lot of arrangements from him and then I wanted really to have my own choir trying to sing that kind of music that had made him so very very good and interesting as a arranger and composer. Uh, when I was his age I was somewhat in the same place, a different place in my career but uh, with the interest in music and the excitement about everything that everybody was doing that, that appealed to me. I knew who all the choirs were and I knew who all the people were that were doing the arrangements and the good singers, even though I'd never met them. And I understood very much what was going on with him. So um, I enjoyed his enthusiasm. I enjoy his enthusiasm now. I came to his house and Every time I walk in, I'm here five minutes, and we are now talking about music, listening to records, looking at more music, you know. And this is, to use an American slang expression, this is where it is. Mm -hmm. You know, this is where life is for a, a musician, actually. Two years ago, I met Eric Erickson, and the same thing happened. We were together about two hours, two and a half hours maybe, during which time he played tapes for me. He showed me a pile of music that he had just brought back from Eastern Europe. And we talked about what he was doing and what I was doing and what he was going to do. And, you know, that's how it is. I tend to go oh, 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 more delicate. Oh, 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 oh. And, um, why does everyone say I bellow? Oh, 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 oh. It shouldn't be pretty. You know, it should be a bellow. You know what a bellow is? The sound that the cow's husband makes. <laughs> it's a bellow. <laughs> Once again. Be sure on the cadences, tenors, be sure that on the cadences you're high. Laugh and the world will... Cry and you cry alone. Hi, I'm the dick. a social thing in many situations. There are probably more church choirs than there are anything else. But you sing in the choir because you have the, the communion of singing and then afterward you have a cup of coffee and talk about the music and talk about the conductor and, you know, uh, have a kind of party. And maybe as well sing for the sake of singing. Now, I think... Uh, uh, we don't have the tradition, for example, that you have, but I think it's building. So it's very much a social thing and, and a very important social thing. I do a great many concerts. Each year, I, I can do as many as, uh, in a 20-week tour, I could do 110 or 120 concerts. And although I change the program from concert to concert, there might be some things that I would do every night, and yet every night when I do them, it's a brand new experience for me. I've yet to be bored with one of the pieces mm -hmm. I do. If I were bored with it, I wouldn't do it. It could be a very simple piece, but somewhere in the piece is an ideal that is realized only in the head, never in the ears. 
a musician looks at a piece of music on paper and it, if he likes it, it's a, it's a marvelous sound, a perfect sound, which is never realized in real life. And his effort is, his, his life is spent in trying to realize that in, in actuality. Mm-hmm. So it's very difficult to get bored mm-hmm. under those conditions. To a great extent, people become specialists today. One person does a marvelous job on, on very early music or on romantic music or on contemporary music. But the marvelous thing about Eric Erickson is that he does a marvelous job on all of them. Mm-hmm. Now, I've heard three choruses, the radio chorus, the chamber chorus, and the Orphée Drenger. <laughs> and each in its own way is really remarkable. I, the Orphée Drenger for a, an amateur male chorus is really an extraordinary sound. I've done a great deal of recording with male choruses, professionals who are as good singers as there are anywhere in the world. And I would say that some of the sounds that the Orphée Drenger make are certainly as good as we've ever made and maybe better. And the variety of uh, repertoire is much greater than we have done. I get... Um, a very emotional feeling from uh, hearing Eric Erickson's recordings. This is something which I miss in a great deal of choir recording that I hear, that it tends to be mechanical rather than musical and emotional. But I feel, as I say, a great deal from Eric Erickson. I think he must be, he doesn't look like an emotional man, but I have a feeling he must be a very emotional man. One, two, one, two, three. sound quite as marvelous as the sound that a conductor hears when he looks at a piece of music. No performance of it ever really comes up to that perfection that he hears when he looks at the music. And any rehearsal and any performance is a constant search to achieve those sounds which are possible on the paper. I I'm saying to myself, how shall I say it so that I can get it? What, what am I not saying to them, which is that magic word which will make it all wonderful? See, it's very demanding just yes, to stand for the same chorus day after day, year after year. And I think they need influences uh, uh, about uh, repertoire, for instance, as you give them. 
about uh, how you give another way to conduct them and they have just to be trained to follow your your conducting and then I don't know if perhaps you try to give them a new sound well every conductor has a different sound in his ear and every conductor has slightly different methods so I think being professional singers, like professional orchestras, they should be able to work equally well with all kinds of mm. repertoire and all kinds of conductors. Mm. This, of course, is a remarkable chorus, and it's hard work. We're working, I think the hardest things are, are the pronunciation, you know, to get a, a real American pronunciation, and uh, some of the dynamic thrust mm. of, of rhythmic music. Mm. So much of the music you know, uh, today doesn't require a rhythmic kind of force. It's got rhythms. You know, you must come in at the right time, mm. but it doesn't go along in, mm. in a tempo. Mm. It's freer. Mm. And I think this is what's hard to do, to make mm. the words mean something, mm. too. No, that's very important, because when we uh, try to find out uh, what kind of music Norman should conduct here, uh, I, I thought it, the best uh, would be just to, to take uh, very rhythmical pieces because here we are so lyrical and so weak and, and we just need rhythmic vitality. I wouldn't say weak particularly after last night <laughs> because the sound when we walked into the room mm. last night was such a tremendous sound and the rhythmic thrust mm. of, of the mm. OD mm. Is, is not to be underestimated. Mm. That's do you think that the, or there is a big audience for contemporary music? Do you think the audience is ready for it? And uh, how do you feel about that? Mm. I think I'll ask Erik first. Well, I, I, I know there are some contemporary music that directly goes to the audience, even if the audience is not especially well trained. And I think that's a, a good sign that it is good music. Uh, I remember, for instance, I talked about it earlier, we, we did a tour uh, in the northern part of Sweden and we performed uh, Ligitis Luxeterna, which is a rather, rather new piece. And there was uh, old women sitting in the church and they just uh, come after the concert and tell us how much they liked that piece. And they were really not trained auditors, but there must be something in it. I agree. When the music is, it, it's as if it were in a different language. You don't really have to always understand the language to get the, the sense of it. People ask with uh, contemporary art, what does it mean? First, you have to say, do I feel anything from it? Do I get any kind of message from it? Then, if you do, you can figure out perhaps how the artist did it. You can analyze it, you can try to go further with it. But first, the important thing is to say, do I get anything from it? And if you do, then it's a, it's a piece for you. Mm -hmm. And if you don't, then you don't bother with it again. But I think audiences for contemporary music are growing all over the, all over the world. Mm -hmm. It's important that, uh, that uh, this mu you can't live in the music of the past any more than you live in the art of the past or the, or the, you, you can't live in the past, you can only live today. There were so many times when I didn't have a dime Me. Up. And he brought me. He's my keeper. 
Nothing up. He's my guy. Nothing up. I'm